the Joe Rogan experience. Where were we? We were talking about talk to me. We're we'll talking about how the process from going from um. Okay, how, how to get I, the script picked up to actually shooting. Yeah, so we got there was past a blackout. That. We got yeah, we we got a blackout in the studio. So we got to the script gets uh, approval. You, yeah. you managed to dodge all the uh, the obvious tropes. Yeah, but yeah. By, I remember by one going... of the studios. The people that financed it were still iffy on us directing. They said to Sam, our producer, they're like, can you, what, what have they done exactly? Can you send some stuff? They were still a, a little bit unsure because it's a mm. big gamble. It's so much sure. money. So we sent him the car hit video. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we just sent them some examples of a more narrative driven video, which our YouTube videos never really were. So mm. it was it was hard. I remember we did a short film called Deluge before we started the YouTube channel. So was there talk of someone else taking it over? That's what I, well, they didn't say well, that specifically. The but thing is, like, was, the, the, yeah. and one of the reasons we didn't go with the Hollywood studios because they would have Final Cut and be able to make changes and stuff. And like yeah. every single like shot and like sound effect and everything was so like, uh, I guess have like a strong sense of how we want it. I couldn't mm -hmm. imagine having that control taken away from us. Right. So doing the so we went the independent route, lost half the budget, and then it was it was supposed to be an eight week shoot. We ended up it dropped to a seven, then a six, and a five. So we had five weeks. We lost an extra million dollars out of the budget because we uh, cast Sophie Wild because she wasn't a name yet, like as a lead. So they took a million dollars worth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it meanwhile, was, she was great. She, she was, was incredible. Yeah. She is the best, and now she's doing like she's got a lot, like a lot of stuff coming up, which is amazing. Like it was worth it to us because she was the best like performer. And like I've never, man, it's such an amazing experience having someone that's like so good at their craft and like will elevate it uh, to a, a, a point higher than you could imagine in your mind like we have a strong thing of like how we want it to be mm -hmm. you get amazing artists like that and they just fucking elevate it she, mm -hmm. she was so committed there were days when we asked her not to sleep and come to set not having slept because her character's losing her mind or she's meant to have wow. been up on that so she would do that there was a scene where she starts like hitting herself and she was so committed she started beating the crap out of herself for real she was just so caught up she into like, the character in the moment yeah 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 so, she was like uh yeah and because it was such a short shoot like uh we had to really and it was it was during covid was got like down but coming back up so if yeah, you get might. if you get covid then you know you can't come to set for a week or so it was like survivor on set like mm. people like there was one week we lost like seven people or and it, that was on friday I'm like come monday there's gonna be no one left like a uh, uh yeah, we're just like losing so many people. Everyone was constantly getting tested. And we knew if the production shut down, we just, yeah, we weren't going to finish it. We weren't going to make it on budget. There was like budget set aside for certain emergency situations, but it was like really, really tight. So we had to reinvest all of our fees back into the film. Our producer reinvested all of our fees back into the film to make sure that we could get Sophie. And it was just a race for the finish line. It was so, there was days that we had to shoot eight minutes of the film in one day. Well, you, yeah. Usually on a film, it's supposed to be like on average, what, 90 seconds, something like that, yeah. per day of filming. So how did the film get so popular? Well, so we had a... Was it just word of mouth? It, well, we, we got picked up from... So we got into Sundance Film Festival, which is like a really like prestigious film festival, one of the biggest in the world, Sundance. Yeah. Uh, and we got into that somehow. And then uh, there was, I think, like word started spreading there. So we were getting contacted by... Like all the agencies, like all these big, you know, talent agencies, and we're getting like, and they were getting people to, to like reach out to us. So we're getting like two, three hundred emails a day of like people like, oh, sign with us, like this thing. So the word was spreading before the movie even. No one even saw the movie. I think they spoke to the people at Sundance, like what's like a buzz title or something, mm. and that came up. And so when we got there, we it was like this chaotic, like yeah, like a strange. Everything we're trying to get achieve in our life, like being in film, was like, and like it was scratching at the door forever. It just like blew open, and then wow. everything was like, like the most fucking. It was surreal. the most overwhelming. We spent all of Sundance because we had the crew there and the cast. So everyone was just crying the entire time. It was so overwhelming, and even all those emails, all these people reaching out, all these heroes of ours, or all these companies that you've seen so many products from, saying, "Oh, do you want to look at this script? Do you want to look at this?" It was the first time I got. So overwhelmed, I couldn't even open emails. I couldn't look, or I was so. Did like, you just feel surreal? Everything. Yeah, like, felt like, like yeah. Jordan Peele sent a message like randomly, and then uh, Ari Aster, who did Hereditary, he came to the premiere, and like, man, it was there was all this hype around the movie before anyone saw it. I was like, man, I, I would have rather it be like you. No one knows, like 
you just go in not knowing, expecting anything. But mm. there was this really high expectation going into it. We were sitting at the back of the theatre just cringing, man. Like, oh, like, it was the most painful experience because it was, it was the first time we were going to be exposed to critics and, like, harsh critics, you know, Sundance and, and things like that. And uh, we wanted audience members just in the, in the theatre, but I think it was all just, like, industry professionals. So it was, like, it was terrifying. It was, it was, I it was, was troughing so bad throughout the screening thinking it was playing, like, shit. Yeah, people would and get up know. to go to the toilet and they open the, the back door and then light would go over the crowd. We're like, oh. Yeah, it's you just like, it, constantly people are moving around. I'm like, why is the movie boring? Why is people yeah, leaving to yeah. the toilet? Yeah. But I think, and it was like a midnight screening as well. Like they play it at midnight in Egyptian theatre. It was like a big famous theatre. And like it was midnight, so it was late. People like a little bit maybe drunk. Or, mm -hmm. you know, so <laughs> it was like a weird... But yeah, that whole night, I just remember being really emotional and troughing a lot and, and cringing. Tro and, troughing? Uh, in film... Like this peaks and troughs. Peaks and troughs. Peaks oh, and valleys, see, yeah. Oh, it was like troughing and feeling really down. We went up to Ari Aster to apologise to him after the movie. I literally got up to say, I'm so sorry you got dragged here because of all this hype for no reason. I went to apologise to him. So I walked up to him. I'm like, bro, I'm so sorry that... And he's like, that was amazing. And I was like, well, what the fuck? And then he's... So you yeah. thought it wasn't being received well just because people were distracted and moving around or yeah. just you guys were hypersensitive? Hypersensitive yeah, and focusing any, on small any, things. Yeah, anything that was like, you know, like a crackle in the speaker or someone going to the toilet was like you, you a tsunami over, Overthinking. It was such a, right. a very heightened emotional moment that every small thing I was like, this is playing like shit. So when did you realize that it wasn't? When did you realize that this is a hit? When the, at that night, our producer said, A24 want to make an offer on the film. I was like, what the fuck, A24? Which is, we would joke about it on set. Oh, this is very A24, this film. This is a very A24 shot. You yeah, know, do you know A24? No, what's that? So they're a distribu oh. uh, distribution company. Oh, no, they're also they're like, a, like a They're like a film company, company yeah, production yeah. company. They're like the most they're prestigious, a like, stu like, it, it, like kind of indie studio thing. Like, okay. So like, it's all, like they're really selective with their talent. And, and it's, it's kind of like art films. Like, like, can you give me an example of a film? Uh, movie? Um, Mark, you know. Oh yeah, oh, oh, Ex yeah. Machina, one of my all-time favorites. That was yeah. What, yeah. I've watched that movie like ten times. Yeah, it's incredible. God, Witch. I fucking love that movie. Witch, that's another great Red movie. Terry. Yeah, they got all right. good stuff. Uh, Uncut Gems. Uncut oh, Gems. Oh yeah, shit, yeah. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, we love all these films awesome as well. So, <laughs> oh, see, so we, they make dope movies. Yeah, yeah they yeah. make amazing movies. Oh, everything, everywhere, all at once too. Oh, yeah, shit. The Daniels. So that's the thing. We had, we were at a party once with all those directors and actors and stuff, and it was like. We never felt more out of place because they're like, you know. I know we're stupid duh, than proper film directors. We feel so uh, unsophisticated or, or on a... That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, that's, 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 that's just authentic. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, but... Yeah. You don't it's have exactly. to be a stereotypical movie-making human being to make a great movie, obviously. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like a thing, like, I remember Adam Sandler walked in the room and I'm like... I'm like, I want to say something to him. Oh, and so I was like, I was like, so like, uh, it was like meeting you. And I was like, <laughs> and I, and I, he, he came up and I was like, hey, bro, big fan. Yeah. Well, and he's yeah. like, we're having fun. He would walk past. Yeah, like, it was exactly that. Michael just starts being a yeah, chief like fanboy. Yeah, I was like a fanboy. What do you say here? Like, oh, I can't believe I'm here. I'm like, Michael, fuck, be professional. What are you doing? Yeah, like, yeah. look, we have to like wear a suit and like sip martinis or something. I don't know. No, yeah. just be yourself. Be yourself. Be annoying, you know. Yeah, just be yourself. Yeah, you gotta be, well, I do that. have a nightmare of being ourselves. I have a nightmare of like you like chewing me out on something and then you know it's like then there'll be all comments on youtube like hey you full look at this fuck guy yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah like like yeah yeah fuck, he the showed fuck? you I, I have a nightmare of being here as well yeah <laughs> you guys have a nightmare of being here That's yeah joe oh, well, wait, so whatever you say like i agree with man yeah. please, please. Well, don't worry it's working great no need for nightmares this is fun <laughs>